Are we living in the season of the Lord's return? And if so, how can we know for sure? Could Jesus really return at any moment? Or are there many prophecies that must be fulfilled first? For the Bible's answers to these questions, stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Once again this week, our special guest is August Rosado, a Bible prophecy teacher and preacher and founder of a ministry called Today in Bible Prophecy. Welcome, August. It's great to be back. Hey, I like that name, Today in Bible Prophecy. It could be today. So, <laughs> what you're doing is you're trying to uh, uh, show how current events relate to Bible prophecy, right? That's exactly right. That's well, why I founded the ministry. You in do a great job of it. That's Thank why you. we invite you on this program. Thank you very much. Well, we're also glad this week to have uh, my colleague Nathan uh, Jones back with us. Nathan is our web minister. And Nathan, why don't you just kick this thing off by asking the first question? I'd be happy to. Great to see you again, man. <laughs> be back with you, brother. <laughs> All right. Last week, you gave a great explanation why Israel is the sign of the times of the point to the Lord's soon return. And we'll get back to that later in the program. But now, why don't you cover what other signs that we're seeing in the news today, how they are pointing to the Lord's soon return? Well, I would have to look, Nathan, at the European Union. I mean, mm -hmm. the European Union, I believe, is at least that infrastructure or foundation for a future revived Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And out of that European Union will produce the Antichrist, the beast mentioned in Revelation chapter 13. When you look at the European Union today, there are 27 member states in the European Union uh, with a citizenship of over 500 million people. Uh, they're wow. looking to get their own police force. When I look at the, the headquarters of the European Union today, they designed it to look like the incomplete Tower of Babel. We're going back to Genesis chapter 11 now. Mm -hmm. So they're using a, a symbol of rebellion against God to represent something that's going to be global in the future, according well, to the Bible. They claim they're mm -hmm. going to be able to do what, the, what the, they failed to do at the Tower of Babel. They're going to unite all of humanity in, in, uh, in rebellion against God. That, that's exactly right. They want to unite everyone. That's what they're saying on their website. Well, how do you know then the Antichrist is coming out of the European Union? Well, when you look in Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 26, it talks about the prince of the people that shall come and shall destroy the city of the sanctuary. Sanctuary, excuse me. We know that was General Titus, the son of Vespasian, who came into Jerusalem in 70 AD, wiped out Herod's temple, and the Jews were scattered to the four corners of the earth. But then when you read verse 27, it says, and he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Since Daniel tells us 69 weeks have already been fulfilled, or 483 prophetical years, or 173,880 days, then we know that the Antichrist must come from those people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. I reject this gobbledygook today of a Muslim Antichrist. I am not convinced of that in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. He must be of European descent, Roma descent. He must come out of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. That is the Antichrist in Revelation 13. You know, uh, uh, August, it's hmm. really amazing to think about what's happening there in Europe because uh, people have tried to reconstruct the, uh, the old uh, Roman Empire many times throughout history. It, it never, the, the idea never died. But they always tried to do it with military force. You had Napoleon try to do it and, and many others, Charlemagne and others. But it had to be God's timing. And yes. when it came God's timing, it just all came together peacefully without military force or whatever after World War II. And suddenly we have it today. Exactly. You know, Paul Henry Spock, who was the uh, states person for the European Union, said this, we're not looking for another committee. He <laughs> says, we have too many already. What we need is a man of sufficient stature, one who can hold the allegiance of the people and bring us up out of this economic mess that we're sinking into. Send us such a man and be he God or the devil. We will accept him. I think and, the latter half of the statement will be the and case. And he's on his way. Mm -hmm. And he's on his way. Oh, okay. Revelation 13 1. Well, what would be another sign you would see today that points to the soon return of Jesus? I would have to say apostasy in the church. 
for. I mean, there is so yeah. much heresy in the church today, Dr. Reagan. It's not even funny. I'm reminded of what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. He says that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the last days, some, thank God not all, but some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons and doctrines of devils. That's exactly what we see going on today. Yeah, we've got major Christian leaders all over the place today, so-called Christian leaders. Yes. Uh, they are very influential, though, who are denying all the fundamentals of the faith. I mean, the fundamentals, mm -hmm. like the resurrection, the virgin birth, the second coming of Jesus. That's exactly right. As a matter of fact, Paul again picks up on that in 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. And I love this. He says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. If we're not living in the last days, then I don't know what, okay? Yeah. He says, Perilous yeah. times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, yes. unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures, Nathan, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That's exactly what we see what many of these so called Christian leaders fact, say. They're Peter denying says, the authority of God. Peter word. says in his epistles that uh, one of the signs of the end times will be people scoffing at the very idea of the return of Jesus. That's Second Peter 3 <laughs> verses 3 and 4. I mean, here we are. Yeah. He says, This know also that in the last times there will, some, there will come mockers walking after their own lust and saying, Where was the promise of His coming? See, I always mm -hmm. thought that referred to atheists, but now as I look around today, <laughs> I see Christian leaders scoffing at the idea of the return of Jesus. Hey, he's not going to be here for a thousand years, two thousand years. We're going to conquer the earth. We're going to rule the earth. We'll turn it over to Jesus then. But it's just unbelievable. Pamillennialism, it's all going to pan out according to these guys. <laughs> they just don't understand what the Bible says because the, Paul mm -hmm. says uh, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof from such, turn away from such people. I can just mention names right now, which I won't, but we know many people that come mm -hmm. to mind that are denying the fundamental truths of the Christian well, now faith. Now, you, you gave that quotation from 2 mm -hmm. uh, Timothy. Uh, that refers to another sign of the end times, and that's the disintegration of society. Mm. Yes. I mean, it's just going to disintegrate before our very eyes. Jesus said, we're going to go in full circle and society will become as evil as it was in the days of Noah. Absolutely. And he says in Matthew 24 verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Yeah. Uh, Paul said in 2 Timothy 3, 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's exactly what we see as one of the signs well, of the Well, if you go times. over to Genesis chapter 6 and look at uh, the society that existed in the time of Noah, there's two characteristics of it, immorality and violence. Mm. And we look around us today and what do we see? Growing immorality, growing violence in the United States and all over the world. And just as Noah preached to the people that judgment is coming, repent and be prepared, they rejected Noah's message just as they reject the message of Bible prophecy and the soon return of Jesus today. Would you say that just the understanding of Bible prophecy as it's never been understood before would be a sign of the end times? I would believe it's a sign of the end times, a lack of Bible understanding today because there's no teaching of it in our churches today. You know, uh, it reminds me of Daniel. Uh, God gave him all these prophecies about the end time. He said, Lord, I don't understand. What, what do these mean? And what did God tell him? God when told the him time that. comes... They will be understood. They would be understood. And we are understanding those very prophecies today. Yeah, through historical developments like the reestablishment of Israel and through uh, modern technology. Mm. I mean, two witnesses are going to die, uh, be killed in Jerusalem, and the whole world's going to look upon their through bodies. Through satellites. How can mm -hmm. that be? Absolutely. Through I mean, satellites. Before the yeah. 1960s, nobody understood that. Mm -hmm. What we understand it. And they would scoff him back in the day that how can all the world see these two witnesses die in the streets of Jerusalem? That's an impossibility. Now it is not an impossibility. It's going to happen in the not too distant mm -hmm. future. With satellites and everything that we have, oh, they yeah. will see these two witnesses dead in the streets of the city of Jerusalem. Who can keep up with technology? Well, we live in the, the church of Laodicea time period where it's apostasy, but that's a negative spiritual sign. Is there any positive spiritual signs to give us hope for this time? There is some positive spiritual signs, and what we need to do is trust God and His Holy Word yeah. and believe every jot and every tittle from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 20, but especially Revelation 22 well, 20. I, I would say mm -hmm. one of the most positive spiritual signs in this day and time is the preaching of the gospel all over the world as it's never been done before through the use of the Jesus film. Uh, through uh, satellite television, through satellite radio, uh, through missionaries going out all over the world, through use of computers to, com uh, to translate the Bible rapidly mm. into many, many languages of the world. 
Boy, there's a lot of positive signs today. In fact, there are more people coming to Christ today than ever before in history. 25,000 a day in China alone. That, that's a real blessing. I'm even hearing of Muslims coming to faith oh, in Jesus. Oh, especially in Africa. They're scared. The Imams are scared because the people are converting like crazy to Christianity. Though. And they say, we don't understand why our people are turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. I <laughs> mm, wonder why. I wonder why, too. It's Matthew 24, 15. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I'm even glad though, you quoted that verse because I wanted you to come on it because that is what, probably the most common letter I get email message. They quote that verse and say, Jesus cannot come back until yes. that is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So don't talk to me about the rapture occurring any moment. <laughs> so what about that? Well, Matthew 24 deals only with the specifics of the tribulation period. And I know that many yeah. use Matthew 24, 14, apply it to the church age and say, uh, until all the nations hear the gospel, the rapture of but the church cannot happen. that's talking about the happen. second coming. That's not talking about the rapture. It is referring to the second coming. Because when you look during the tribulation period, God's going to raise up three groups of individuals to preach the gospel. The 144,000 Jews in Revelation 7, that's not the church, by the way. Amen. Uh, I take from that each passage. Tribe. Exactly. Yeah. 12,000 each from the 12 tribes of Israel. I take that passage literally. There is nothing there to suggest that we should take it allegorically. 144,000 male Jewish Israelites will be preaching the gospel during the tribulation period. When they finish their testimony, we have these two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. They're going to be preaching the gospel. Multitudes are going to get saved. Right. And then we have that angel in Revelation 14, 6. The gospel preaching angel. Preaching the everlasting gospel. <laughs> in the very end God's grace and mercy before He pours out His final wrath sends exactly. an angel who proclaims the gospel to every person on planet Earth. That's when that passage of Matthew 24 that's is going to be That's what Matthew 24, 14. Now the reason mm -hmm. why I quoted it was for the sake of well, just trying to prove a point, but that's exactly I what... I want you to come back in just a moment and talk to us about the most important sign of all that we are living in the season of the Lord's return. Amen. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy. We have been talking with August Rosado about the signs of the times that point to the soon return of Jesus. August is the founder of a ministry called Today in Bible Prophecy. August, how about uh, sharing with us for a moment about why you believe that Israel is the cornerstone sign of end time Bible prophecy? I would be happy to, Dave. The Bible teaches that the greatest miracle of the 21st century was the rebirth of the state of Israel, May the 14th of 1948. As a matter of fact, God told the Jewish prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 36 of verse 24, He says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you back into your own homeland. That was fulfilled May the 14th of 1948. Can you imagine that? God revealed that to the Jewish prophet Ezekiel some 2,600 years ago, that the Jewish people would be back in their own homeland. As a matter of fact, God told the Jewish prophet Amos in Amos chapter 9 and verse number 15, he says, For I will plant them upon their own homeland, and they will no more be uprooted out of the land which I have given them, saith the Lord. This is the reason why the Arab world was unsuccessful successful in trying to eliminate the Jewish state of Israel. The War of Independence in 1948, the 1956 Suez Canal War, the 1967 Six-Day War, and the 1973 Yom Kippur War. The Arab world was unsuccessful because of that verse we have in Amos 9.15. God said the Jewish people would be back in their own homeland and no foreign entity would be able to uproot them from their land. We know that Satan is at work today trying to raise up modern day world empires to try to destroy destroy the Jewish people. But God has other plans for His chosen people, the apple of His eye. I'm reminded of Deuteronomy chapter 28. God told Moses in Deuteronomy 28 that He revealed that the Jewish people would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. We know that that was fulfilled in the year 70 A.D., the Roman general Titus, the son of Vespasian, came into the city of Jerusalem, wiped out Herod's temple, and the Jewish people were scattered to the four corners of the earth. However, God promised that the Jewish people would be restored back in their own homeland. 1,897 years after the destruction of the temple, the Jewish people are back in their own homeland because there is a God that keeps His promises. There is a God that keeps covenant. I'm reminded of Titus chapter 1 and verse number 2, where it says that in hope of eternal life in which God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. God made promises to the Jewish people, and God will keep His promises to the apple of His eye. The Bible also tells us that the Jewish prophet Isaiah said, and I want to quote Isaiah chapter 66, it says, Who hath heard such a thing? 
who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. In just one day, ladies and gentlemen, the nation of Israel was born just as God revealed to the Jewish prophet Ezekiel, just as God revealed to the Jewish prophet Isaiah, that in one day the Jewish people would be back in their own homeland. When? Fulfilled May the 14th of 1948. God restored the Hebrew language as foretold to the Jewish prophet Zephaniah in Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 9. God says that one day I will restore a pure language back to the Jewish people. God raised up a man by the name of Eliezer ben Yehuda, and God used him to restore the Hebrew language to the Jewish people. And of course, Hebrew is the official language spoken of in the state of Israel today. If the rabbis had their way, Hebrew would not be the official language of the state of Israel. But of course, according to the new Yeshua, this new Zionist movement, Hebrew is now the official language of the state of Israel. Why? Because the Jewish prophet Zephaniah foretold that in Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 9. I want to make a quote from Israel's first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion. And this is what he said concerning the rebirth of the Jewish state of Israel. He says this, he says, if you know the history of the modern story of Israel, if you know the story of Israel and what happened here and you do not believe in miracles, you are not realistic. If you don't believe that Israel is a modern day miracle of God, as David Ben-Gurion said, you are not realistic. We see miracles throughout the entire word of God from Genesis 3.15 all the way to Revelation 22.20. Israel is indeed a modern day miracle of God. God God said in one day that nation would be born, Isaiah chapter 66, one day that they will be restored back into the land, uh, May the 14th, 1948, fulfilling Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 24. In Jeremiah chapter 34, 18 times he tells us there that God says that he will keep his promises to Israel. He will keep his promises to the Jewish people, and that's exactly what he has. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jewish people are back in their own homeland against all odds in preparation for Daniel's 70th week of prophecy. Now, when I say Daniel's 70th week of prophecy, I am referring to a future seven-year period of tribulation to come upon this world. I'm reminded of Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 24. Uh, God says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Thy people is a reference to the Jewish people. Thy holy city is a reference to the city of Jerusalem in the Hebrew, the city of Jerusalem. Matter of fact, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 tells us, that the tribulation period will be a time of Jacob's trouble. He didn't say it was a time of the church's trouble. He didn't say it was a time of the Christian's trouble, but it is indeed a time of Jacob's trouble. I am convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that we will not be here when Daniel's seventh week of prophecy begins on this earth. I am reminded of a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. I'm reminded of what Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verse 9. He says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 tells us that we are to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Folks, that is future tense, from the wrath of come. I'm also reminded of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 9 where it says, For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And who can deny the words of Yeshua himself, the Lord Jesus, in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation that shall come upon all the world to try them, not us, but to try them who dwell on the earth. It is proof in the pudding, ladies and gentlemen, that we as a church will not be here on this earth when that final week of Daniel's 70th week of prophecy transpires, that last seven-year period of tribulation to come upon this world. I am convinced we will not be here. The Jewish people are back in their own homeland, but they're back in unbelief. They must be back in unbelief in preparation for that future seven-year period of tribulation to come upon this world. It will be during that seven-year period of tribulation that the Jewish people will come to faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. The Bible tells us that the very end of the tribulation period, Jesus Christ will return back to this earth at his second coming. That's recorded 
in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. John said, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Upon his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now, church, this is where we come in, in verse number 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. That was a church that was raptured seven years earlier. We are coming back with him seven years later. The Bible says in verse 15 that out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress and the fiercest and the wrath of Almighty God. Verse 16 says, upon his vesture, his prayer shawl is talit. Upon his vesture and upon his thigh was a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Ladies and gentlemen, I am telling you that one back, one day our Messiah is coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we are coming back with him. And where is he coming to? The nation of Israel. He's coming back to the city of Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, 4 tells us that one day his feet will touch the Mount of Olives and the Mount of Olives is going to split. Zechariah 12, 10 tells us, I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one that mourns for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn son. Folks, that is a second coming passage to this earth. John reiterates that in Revelation 1, 7. He says, Behold, he cometh in the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen what does that mean that when jesus returns at his second coming israel will indeed know it and they'll look at him and say oh they he was the messiah after all how could we have missed it for the past two thousand years that will take place at his second coming and ladies and gentlemen we are coming back with him so that's the reason why god has the jewish people back in their own homeland in preparation for that future seven year period of tribulation to come upon this world but before there can be a battle of armageddon before there can be a second coming of jesus before there can be a seven year period of tribulation before there can be a confirmation peace treaty by the anti Christ, the Bible says there must be the rapture of the church. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52. Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I'm reminded of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise for us. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, why would Paul tell us as a church to comfort one another with these words? I'll tell you why. Because we will not see one day of that seven year period of tribulation to come upon this world. Between Revelation chapters 4 and 19, there is no reference to Christians on the earth and there is no reference to the church on the earth. We are in glory and we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's Revelation 19 verses 7 through 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints there's going to be a beautiful banquet in heaven one day and if you know jesus christ as your lord and personal savior you will also be there at that wedding banquet amen and we will be coming back with him riding on white horses i remember being in canada a couple of years ago preaching at a prophecy conference and i can remember riding this beautiful white horse when i got on that horse i was reminded ladies and gentlemen of revelation 19 and verse number 14 that the armies which were in heaven follow Jesus upon those white horses clothed in fine linen clean and white ladies and gentlemen he's coming back where to Israel, to the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible says we will reign with him for 1,000 years. That's Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 through 7. Six times John, John tells us he will reign for 1,000 years, 1,000 years, 1,000 years, 1,000 years. It will be a literal, bodily, physical reign of Jesus Christ right here on good old terra firma in the city of Jerusalem, in the land of Israel. For 1,000 years, we're all going to be Israelis. Amen. Why would you want to miss out on the most important event that will take place 
and it's yet to come, and that will be the rapture of the church. Philippians 3, 20 and 21 tells us, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work and whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. One day he's going to change our vile bodies, ladies and gentlemen, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And then the Bible tells us that in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, we are going to be in his very presence. At the rapture, we go to meet him in the air. He doesn't touch anywhere on the earth. But seven years later at his second coming, Zechariah 14, 4 says that on that day, his feet shall touch the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Half the mountain shall be moved toward the north and half of it toward the south. I'm reminded of Jesus's word in Matthew 24, 27. He says, as lightning cometh from the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel is mentioned 2,466 times in our Bible. And God has a plan for Israel. He has a plan for the Jewish people. The church has never and will never replace Israel. God has a plan for the church that he's fulfilling right now during the church age. And he has a plan for the nation of Israel that he will fulfill in that future seven-year period of tribulation to come upon this world. One prophecy preacher put it this way. When you see the signs for Christmas appearing in your department store, you know that there's another the holiday that's even nearer. That's Thanksgiving. When you see the signs for that upcoming seven-year period of tribulation to come upon this world, we know that there's another event that's even nearer, and that is the rapture of the church. Every single day that goes by, ladies and gentlemen, is a day closer to the return of Jesus Christ. And all I'm going to say to that is, Maranatha, even so, Come, Lord Jesus. If you don't know him as your Lord and personal Savior, I pray that today would be the day of salvation. Trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you'll be ready for that next event we call the rapture of the church. All I want to say in ending is, Maranatha, even so come, Lord Jesus. Shalom. August, thank you for that great presentation, man. You blessed my socks off. You're very welcome. And I think you're the only time I've ever heard anybody speak for 15 minutes without taking a breath of air. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? That's, all, that's a God thing. Right there. August, how about telling our viewers how they can get in touch with you and your ministry and also uh, tell them about your new book? I'd be happy to, Dave. You can go to my website at www.todayinbibleprophecy.org. That's one word, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Uh, you can go to our online order catalog, and my new book there will be available, The Serpent, The Seed, and The Second Coming, and we'll make sure we get that copy into your very hands, and I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Nathan, how about telling folks how to get in touch with us? You go to www.lamblion.com. No and, lamblion.com. We have our television shows you can watch, articles. You can sign up for our newsletter that comes out every other week. We've got a Facebook group you can join, a blog. You can get your daily dose of Bible prophecy. Just come to our website, lamblion.com. And now, folks, as we bring our program to a close, I'd like to encourage you to get a copy of one of our most popular publications, The Christ in Prophecy Study Guide. This guide is in its third edition, and it continues to be one of our most beneficial study publications. The guide provides you with every prophecy in the Bible concerning both the first and second comings of the Messiah, and the second coming prophecies are organized in chronological order according to when they are most likely to occur. The book is printed in a large format with a special binding that allows it to lie flat when open. The guide contains exhaustive topical and scripture indexes. You can get a copy of the guide for a gift of $15 or more, plus the cost of shipping, by calling the number you see on the screen. Call between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, or go to our website and place your order there. Again, the title is the Christ in Prophecy Study Guide. It is an invaluable tool for any serious student of Bible prophecy. Well, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Until next week, the Lord willing, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.